please note that this video contains spoilers. Matrix Reloaded Movie Thoughts. Okay, so other than that the link is, you know, somewhat funny, I guess, you know, you never knew that her parano could be so appealing. I guess it's when he stops shouting, WALT! at every turn. Other than him, do we really care about any of the new characters introduced? I mean, not enough time is spent developing them. You know, the, the captain military dude is just clearly supposed to be a, an antagonist of Morpheus, basically. You know, he's maybe not like the villain or something, but we're not meant to root for him. It's really obvious from, you know, the moment you see him, everything they do just hammers that point home. You know, oh, he's jealous. Oh, he doesn't like Morpheus, and we like Morpheus. You know, it's just so... Yeah. So after we, you know, think that this is going to open with, you know, big action because we see Trinity in the beginning, we then cut back to, you know, not really anything happening, and then they leave the Matrix entirely. And then we have to suffer through the introduction of the kid and the point speech dialogue bit horrendous, and the rave, and Morpheus's really lousy speech. And then finally, we get, you know, some more action. We get, you know, the Seraph, not played by, you know, Jet Li, even though it's really clearly supposed to be him. And we get the Smiths, and, you know, we see Smith and Neo fighting again, and after a couple of minutes, we hope that they stop soon, because it's getting really repetitive. I mean, okay, I'll grant that, you know, some of the best stuff of the fight is near the end, when he grabs, you know, the sign post and smashes that into them. But still, it goes on for too long. You know, my ex-fiancé pointed, you know, she used the phrase, going to the well one too many times, you know, or too many times anyway. You know, so after that, we have the Merovingian and, you know, his overdone French accent. And Persephone, who inspires a lot of feelings of lust in much of the audience. And then we get some more action. It is pretty cool, the Chateau fight, I believe it's called. And, you know, the freeway scene is just plain awesome. One thing about the Chateau scene... When Neo uses those sighs to, to, you know, nail that guy to the the wall, he sort of hits him, but he's, does he knock him out? I mean, the guy wakes up like one minute later. It's just so that, you know, the fight can go on. I mean, at that point, it's really clearly choreo you know, choreographed. Also, some, when Neo swings the sword, you can kind of say, okay, yeah, that's just... This is more like a dance than a fight, so can, you know, can we get back to when it's exciting? The freeway scene is just, you know, awesome. I could spend forever just talking about all the awesome in that. And the twins, again, just plain awesome, and they do a nice job introducing, you know, what their powers are like. But when talking about the Chateau, we do really have to go into... There are werewolves in this movie. There are there are, there are werewolves or vampires, something like that. You know wh what are they doing here? What, I have to wonder: Are all the programs that don't behave do they all have human form? I mean, why would you write a program in human form that's yeah, albino twin with dreadlocks? Was the programmer high? You know, because they talk about how the, oh, the programs, you know, control the wind and all that. Okay, do they always have human form? Is there a human form program somewhere around that controls the wind? Or do they only get human form when they start misbehaving? Could we see misbehaving programs that aren't, that don't have a human form? That might be interesting. And, well, on the positive, it is... 
interesting with Seraph. You know, he's seen in Yellow Code. We don't know if that's just Seraph or if that is programs. You know, we never see Neo use his, you know, Matrix Code vision on, you know, for example, the Oracle. You know, it might be interesting to see if, and, you know, again, an open question, and that's interesting enough. And the point that, you know, she is indeed a program, you know. Now, his code vision is somewhat silly when, you know, when they're in the elevator and it's like, okay, what do you see? You know, he's just like, I don't know, almost a tool, a piece of equipment for them to use. Okay, we have radar vision. What, you know, what does it show us? <clears throat> the... The Keymaker is a nice, cool concept, and, you know, a, and the whole bit with, again, you know, we have this introduction of, you know, when the door is shut all the way, you know, you can use the key, or, you know, and, and they, you know, for example, have to chase, you know, Neo chases down you know, the two twins, and the door is closed, and he bursts through the door, and yeah, you know, it doesn't lead to that anymore. You know, the, you know, the backdoor tunnels kind of thing that, you know, Seraph also mentions. The architect feels like a bit of a cop-out, you know, it's kind of, okay, we have to explain this stuff, and it's really pretentious how he keeps using big words, you know, like just trying to make the people in the audience feel stupid. And just in general, you know, there are bad writing. You know, th this one feels the need to set up, you know, where the first one was kind of, you know, us versus them kind of thing. Nice, simple popcorn entertainment, sort of, you know, even though it did also challenge you. This one almost immediately tries to set up, you know, oh, but we need machines, remember? Nink, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know? Yeah, I suppose that's about what there is to say, so... Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.